Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Monique de Martin on the subject of addiction to power, superiority and control. This session was recorded on the 17th of November 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi everyone. Welcome to our little studio in Wilkesdale today, where we're going to be, I'm here with Jesus, and we're going to be recording a personal feedback session this afternoon. Mm. And this one relates to the addiction to superiority, control and power. And there's lots that we're going to say about it that apply to a lot of people. Um, but this is in response, particularly to an email to myself from Monique, who's someone that we've known for quite some time, isn't she? Mm. Yeah. Yes. So I'll just get on and read the email and sure. then we can start the There's discussion. There's a whole series of interactions that have had he been had here and yes. and very little application of any of the our words in the past, but this will be our probably last <laughs> <laughs> one stating the same thing that we've said many times before to Monique. Yeah, mm. yeah. So she writes, Hi Mary, I really want to ask you to provide some feedback if you feel it appropriate. I've received a series of emails fortunately, describing my repeated unlovingness to others with arrogance, superiority, power, control, competition, and adoration. Mm -hmm. These emails have surprised me each time <laughs> as, I, as I've kept deluding myself as to the state of my soul condition mm. and continued to hurt others. Mm. But this time I feel some sincerity in me to actually see these things and it spreads far and wide. And just when I think I've begun to get a picture of the addiction facade, there seems to be entire other aspects that I am in complete denial of. I then repeat the steps that you and AJ Jesus have so lovingly given us of facade deconstruction and then challenge the addictions, which sometimes brings up fear. I pray to God and he always helps me see, feel or get truth or courage as you have both suggested. I'm praying to help me see things I am blind to too and sometimes I see spirit influence about my superiority or other ways I am unloving. I feel I am grateful you and to you and Jesus for spending the time to shine a light on my addictions, facade, arrogance over the years. And I feel it has saved me from going down some really dark roads forever. But I'm also aware that I have a long history of fakeness, self-delusion, power plays and vicious attacks at people. And for this reason, I wanted to ask you, Mary, to provide any feedback of my unlovingness if I'm deluding myself in major self-delusion again or blind to these major issues that would allow me to hurt others and bring dark spirits to the assistance groups as I have registered for a number of them. I understand that you said for me not to write because of my attacks, mm. but I do feel some sincerity in me to know more and maybe this is true. But I am also very open to hearing that none of what I'm saying is true. I do appreciate all of the talks you and Jesus and Legal have posted that really have assisted us. And I've gotten much good material out of this that covers these addictions. I guess I'm afraid that none of this is true and I'm once again kidding myself, but it is better to know than not. Thanks mm. again, Monique. Mm. Well, Monique, um, firstly, I need to say to you that the situation for yourself is much worse than what you believe it is and uh, and has been much worse for a long period of time than what you believe it is. Um, so what we'll do, I feel, is go through some very basic uh, material with you, uh, stuff that we've gone through with you in the past, and um, to highlight the particular problems. But perhaps the best way to start is to actually dissect her email to... Sure to us first, this recent email to us. Yeah. And, and then we would like to highlight what's really going on in a number of areas for her. Yeah. Now, um, there are two motivations we have for sharing, again, the same material with Monique. One motivation is that we feel 
that uh, there is, of course, always the possibility that someone, even though they are very, very rigid in their refusal to accept truth, may at some point begin to see the truth and work their way through the issue. Mm -hmm. So that's one of our hopes, obviously, every time we share some feedback with somebody. But the second reason also applies to Monique, and that is that um, we feel that she is a quite an unsafe person to be with um, because of the level of attack and belittling and condescension and other emotions, and also because of the um, darkness of the spirits that surround her constantly through her life that she brings into every interaction with people and thereby allows people to be attacked by these spirits and mm. have their faith ripped apart basically mm. by her words. And so we feel that it's very important that other people who hear this material understand that there are many people who come along to our sessions for the express purpose, motivated by the express purpose of spirits to just pull people's faith apart. Mm -hmm. In other words, to create a lot of uh, turmoil uh, and heartache for individual people that they feel that they can gain power and control over. And Monique does unfortunately fit into that category. She is one of those persons who is easily manipulated by these very dark spirits into doing their bidding and also into harming it or, and even potentially destroying the faith of others. Mm. And so we just feel that um, as a result of that, she do, is not aware of the danger she herself poses to and the spirits with her pose to people who are actually trying to practice divine truth. Yeah. So perhaps what we mean to do is elucidate further on those matters yeah. and then go through. So I think the best way to approach it is to go through her current email. Yep. And then we'll work through some of the issues that we, I've just raised in my preamble at the beginning <laughs> yeah. just now. And perhaps we can mention that we have known Monique for uh, at least four or five years and that, <coughs> and, and that we have, um, we've been giving her feedback and we've known her well over this entire time. Mm. Because this email, perhaps to the person first hearing it, would sound... Well, it sounds very Quite innocent sincere. and sincere, but the reality is if you could feel her emotions yeah. and, in, and also the emotions of the spirit with her and the motivations, yeah. it's actually not very sincere at all. So yeah, we'll talk so about why that's the case. All right. Mm. So um, oh, we'll begin. And by the way, we often get people of us who are similar that we've given similar advice and feedback to in the past, sending similar emails periodically to us. Yeah. Who, who say almost the same things as what Monique's saying, um, not realising that actually it's being motivated by some very dark uh, yeah. motivations actually to gain power and control over others that, that those spirits in particular feel they are currently losing. Yes. So, so, yeah, we need to go through the material and explain how that is the case. And how it happens. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hi, Mary. I really want to ask you to provide some feedback if you feel it appropriate. It's interesting, firstly, she doesn't ask both of us. It's just mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And this has been one of her problems uh, since the beginning in that she approaches you for the express purpose of trying to denigrate and pull you down and trying to manipulate time out of you in order to gain power over you. Mm -hmm. She has a deep emotional injury relating to women where she desperately wants power and control over all women and particularly any women who she feels you know will potentially give her that power and control or that she can potentially manipulate by shaming her in some way which, which she has always attempted to do with you yeah i have a lot of suppressed shame and so <coughs> i i've been very open to this kind of manipulation in yes. the past yeah. and this is one reason why she doesn't approach me because i'm not open to that mm -hmm. kind of manipulation particularly from her because yeah. i see the weakness and the moral the lack of moral character that she has and, and she, she and the spirits with her know that, whereas, whereas most women who interact with her can't see the spirits with her or her own lack of moral character. And so, so she has a way in immediately where mm -hmm. people automatically believe they should listen to her. And uh, because she has an aura of confidence, self-confidence and self-assurance, most people finish up listening to her, unfortunately. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. 
And um, back in June, Monique and I had a very direct, uh, I was very direct with Monique. Mm -hmm. she, d she sent a similar email in a lot of facade wanting mm -hmm. to express what she called gratitude to the both of us. And, and I was very direct with her about a lot of those issues that you just mentioned. Yes, there's yep. a, a same motivation with that email as yep. there is with this one, yep. which we'll yeah. go through in a minute. Yeah. Okay. I've received a series of emails, fortunately, describing my repeated unlovingness to others with arrogance, superiority, power, control, competition, and adoration as she means there that other other people yeah so she's basically is saying adore her. she's received a series of emails from other people yeah about her desire for power and control over them and her sense of superiority over them yeah. and a, a number of people are, are beginning to complain directly to her about this particular thing that she does with everybody around her yeah. now now i feel that is a good thing that these people are being more directly honest with her in the past they have been dishonest with her by just avoiding her mm -hmm. rather than telling her what the actual problem is however we have told her about these particular problems for a long period of time and she has not listened to a word we've said about what these particular problems yeah. so it's taken a group of people not just one person who loves her yeah. but rather a group of people now expressing these particular things to her before she realizes there's a problem so yes. that in itself is a problem it is a problem <laughs> and we should say that so for for about four years you and i mm -hmm. have been giving this feedback to monique yes. about the way that she has these very addictive desires and tries to and, and quite evil desires actually you yep. know, and we've spoken to her about the extent of the evil in these desires there is a very dark underlying motivation to destroy people yeah and and it's very unkind and yep. very unloving and it's darkening her soul condition obviously yeah. but also it ruins people's lives it put, yeah. and the spirits with her desire to ruin people's lives yes. unfortunately yeah. and uh, and we've taught her about these particular things for years now and she has ignored everything yeah. we've stated to her about it that's right and each right. time she's acted very surprised we even got to the point where we, sh we asked her not to come to any of our talks because we would observed this behavior and because and and we did that because we could observe the spirit attack on other people while she's present at the talks and and we feel that no we want the talks and any of our presentations to be a place where people can come and be loved and, yeah. and express themselves lovingly without condescension or ridicule or attack mm -hmm. or, or without the condescension, ridicule and attack from spirits, from, from darker spirits. And she was one of the persons bringing quite a number of dark spirits along to our groups. And so we've asked, please don't come. After, what, after quite a long time, After quite time, a lot of it? time. Giving her the <laughs> opportunity to deal with it and, and exactly. she hadn't. No, so, no. so she's, when we've tried to point these things out to her, she's always acted very shocked and really projected that we don't know what we're talking about. Well, no, that's yeah. right. She feels superior to everyone, including ourselves. Yeah. And, and she's always tried to indicate that that's the case where, you know, and so, so whenever we state anything to her, she comes up and asks us a question, but even her motive for asking questions is all about opening a person up to gain control over them. Mm -hmm. That's her underlying motivation, yeah. unfortunately. And the spirits with her love her having that motivation because it allows them to express through her doubt, ridicule, condescension, and a lot of other emotions towards the person, including ourselves, mm -hmm. that she is engaging. And, and this is what we've talked to her about repeatedly, which she has repeatedly ignored. Mm. Mm. There's a couple of things we wanted to mention about that, about the ignoring of an issue for such a long time. Yes. If Monique had been soft to that feedback, mm -hmm. uh, which was given to her lovingly each Four time. Four or five years ago now, the yeah. first time. Um, then she could have begun to deal with it then. Yes. But because she's ignored it, she's actually gone on to harm hundreds, hundreds of, people. of people. Yeah, yeah, that we are aware of. Yeah. And, and of, of course, there'd probably be many more that we're not aware of. Yeah. So in that plot time, she's severely worsened her condition, unfortunately. Mm. And uh, while all the while arrogantly believing that she's superior to everyone around her and, and understands divine truth better than even the teachers of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. So something's <laughs> happened now in that more, that more people than just the two of us have started to speak with her about it. Of course. 
Now, this hasn't actually caused her to go into any self-reflection, really. Mm -hmm. What it's done is it's caused the spirits with her to become concerned. The spirits with her are concerned because they're losing control of the divine truth people that she had control over before. Yeah. They sort of, the spirits with her view anybody who comes to listen to divine truth as gullible and, and stupid, and, and they only wish to tear people apart. Yeah. And they use Monique as a vehicle for doing so. Mm -hmm. Now, Monique, although she does not have those personal emotions of desiring to tear people apart, literally, mm -hmm. um, does have very strong emotional injuries regarding superiority, a, a, bit, a feeling that she wishes to pull people down, and, a wishing, and wishing to create doubts in people to gain control over them. She wants power, she's addicted to power. And they use her addiction to power to denigrate and pull down people who come along to our sessions. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yep. Okay, so, so this new uh, state of even sort of acknowledging that there might be an issue, is, it's not really m motivated in a desire to... No, it's motivated by the spirits and it's the spirits in particular, but also herself realising that she's running out of people over whom she has power or control over. Yeah. And, and they, of course, are becoming very concerned about that because their addiction is, the spirits with her addiction is, to pull down and destroy as many people as possible. And you can't do that unless you first get an inroad into people. Yeah. And if nobody will allow the inroad anymore, then, of course, yeah. they don't get their addictions met anymore yeah. and neither does she. Yeah. And both she and they are concerned about no longer getting their addictions met anymore. So now they're in a process of what I would call positional recovery. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, like, yeah. And what I mean by positional recovery is they had a position of power where other people would listen to them. Now they don't because nobody's listening to them. Yeah. Now they want the original position back. Now they've got to feign mock humility yeah. in order to gain the, regain the position they had. And then they'll go ahead and just engage in exactly the same behaviour as they have done before. Yeah. And this is exactly the place where they and she is try are trying to achieve at the moment with people who are listening to divine truth. Yeah. Now, it is a very severe injury emotionally. It requires a lot of sincerity, a lot more sincerity than she currently has to address this particular issue. And, and while we do hope that she does develop that sincerity, it, she is so addicted to power and control and so addicted to her feelings of superiority over others that it may be many years yet before she even gets any sincerity to address the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, we hope that she does. Mm -hmm. And the way to help her is that nobody, including ourselves, give her that sense of power and control. Yeah. In other words, we take away the satisfaction of the addiction. Yes. And perhaps just to describe <coughs> a little bit about what Monique commonly does is that she will um, often have a facade of pleasantry with a person. Kindness, pleasantry, smile on her face, ki you know, a, 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 a facade voice that puts on kindness, yes, yeah. in a discussion with a person. And then, but during the course of that discussion, she often says things or says that she's getting messages from spirits. She insinuates things. Uh, yes, she insinuates things. <laughs> and the spirits with her know the injuries of the individuals. Yep. And they purposefully feed her information about that individual that they know the individual is ashamed of. Yeah. And because the individual is unwilling to feel their particular shame about those particular injuries, yeah. they now have control yeah. over that person, yeah. which is their total goal, to yeah. gain control firstly and then to systematically destroy the person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very, very dark motivations. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Will I continue with mm -hmm. the email? Yeah. So Monique says... These emails that she's received from multiple people have surprised me each time as I've kept deluding myself as to the state of my soul condition. Yes, let's just deal with that statement, yep. which is a half of a sentence, I think. Yep. But, um, they, it, if she had ever heard us, it would be no surprise. Mm. So this is an indication that all of the feedback we've given to her in the past, which is quite extensive, yep. has been completely ignored. This is why she is now surprised that other people are saying the same thing as we have. Yeah. Now, we haven't instigated the other people to say it. She's, she's attracted it yes. through the law of attraction. Yeah. And fortunately, these other people have been brave enough to say what needs to be said. Because beforehand, hardly anybody was. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great that they are now brave enough to say the truth to her, mm -hmm. which will certainly have the effect of being able to help her mm -hmm. if she can get 
free of the spirits that are also with her yeah. and, and get and you know deal with the addictions that cause that attraction then she will benefit from the feedback given yeah. to her but it should be of no surprise to her whatsoever mm -hmm. that she's heard this information from a number of people now yeah yeah, yeah. okay so she she says she kept deluding herself as to the state of her soul condition and mm -hmm. continued to hurt others she has but this time I feel some sincerity in me to actually see things and it spreads far and wide. And just when I think I've begun to get a picture of the addiction facade, there seems to be entire other aspects that I'm in complete denial of. Yeah, I can't agree with that statement, Monique. The main motivation for you emailing Mary is to regain a position of power and control. That's the main motivation. You're losing power and control over people who listen to divine truth which you have had in the past you are losing it because they are noticing your true nature mm -hmm. and also the true nature of the spirits with you which is which is have it has a they all have a hurtful intent yeah. and they as a result and now people i'm talking about now are seeing your true desires and therefore withdrawing from you and speaking the truth to you which is fantastic mm -hmm. now that is your primary motivation isn't to listen to them at this point your primary motivation is to regain the power and control that you once had mm -hmm. by feigning or facading a sense <laughs> of humility right yeah this is something that she periodically does and we've talked to her about this in the past and we notice that many others do the same there's a, a, a guy in america who does exactly the same thing and there is a number of others in australia who do exactly the same thing where they put on a facade of humility fool everybody around them mm -hmm. while at the same time insinuating a whole heap of things that are never openly or clearly said but enough to place doubts in the minds of the persons and then they that affects the faith of these people mm -hmm. This is her current motivation to get back that ability to interact in order to do the same manipulative technique uh, in order to gain power and control again over the situation. Yeah. Mm. And so when she talks about engaging these principles that we have taught, there's a lot of self delusion going on here as well, mm. isn't there? Totally. There's a feeling of I've got to try and do the right thing to, in order to gain the powerful so there's no back. even in the intent to do the right thing isn't driven by the desire to be do the right thing yeah. even yeah. it's driven only by the desire to regain the addiction that's getting lost which yeah. is power and control over others that's yeah. the only purpose for it yeah. at this stage now i'm not saying in the future that might change mm -hmm. but at this stage and what we're hoping from this discussion is that, that yes. this discussion may change yeah. her actual desire yeah. to see what's going on rather than just you know again entering the same addictive uh, des desires that we've observed her have in the past where she regains the foothold she lost mm -hmm. she damages it in other group of people then they all reject her and then she regains the foothold she's lost through feigning humility mm -hmm. and then damages another group of people and they reject her and she just goes around damaging pe person after person and and what i'm suggesting to you monique is that you need to stop doing that and see how the terrible the sin is actually it's a it's a it's a terribly dark thing to do these things at the spirit's bidding but also because of your own emotional injuries it's a terribly dark thing to systematically attempt to destroy other people just so that you can feel superior mm. like it's a terrible thing to do to other people and it, it does have severe consequences on your soul mm. Mm. Can we talk a little bit about how a person in their facade is very, it's very, they deceive themselves about their own true motivations in doing things? Do yeah. you feel that's appropriate? Like, well, uh, you know, I am not convinced with Monique that she's deceiving herself because at the end right. of the day, we have had very, very frank and open discussions with her, many of, well, mm -hmm. of them which indicate to her what's really going on, which mm -hmm. she has completely dismissed. So this is not a person who, who is just living in a facade because nobody's ever mentioned it to her before. Mm -hmm. This is a person who's had four years of having a truth mentioned to her periodically over that period of time and still is surprised when a group of people tell her that she's got the problem. <laughs> yeah. so, so this is not just 
uh, a desire, you know, a facade based self delusion. Yeah. This is a purposeful intent. And this is, mu this is why it's much darker and more evil. It, it's a, a purposeful intent to harm other people and to regain a foothold in order to do so. And, and this is very, very dark motivation. And this is the thing she needs to address. Now, she will hear this and potentially just ignore what I'm saying to her because she, she can't believe that that's the case. Yeah. But the reality is, it is the case and she needs to come face to face with it if she's ever going to have a relationship with God, which yeah. I'll raise a bit later, as you mentioned, the next yes. parts of her, yeah. Yeah. Of her um, discussion. Um, so the next part, she says, I then repeat the steps that you and Jesus have so lovingly given us of facade deconstruction and then challenge the addiction, which sometimes brings up fear. Now, this is the part where I feel like she's she's yeah. kidding herself even about totally. what she's doing. It's She's doing it all in her facade. It's not actually... Well... Uh, like, how, how do you describe it? Well, she, she has an intent to harm other people, mm. a personal intent to harm other people. And she does it in a facade way with the other people, but she knows what she's doing. She but, knows that she's generating a facade in order to harm other people, to get a foothold into their life and eventually harm them. And when she's saying though, that she's seeing these issues and she's working through them and deconstructing these steps, no, that I can't, I can't agree. agree with no, that No, not at all. So she's I've really never observed her <clears throat> yeah. working through the issue in any way. In particular, the primary issue, which is her desire for power and, and her desire to keep feeding her sense of superiority yeah. over others. She, she does not address this emotionally, and it's not driven by fear, by the way. No. It's not driven by fear. No. It's driv driven by a sense of entitlement that was given to yes. her during her childhood, in particular by her father. And, and as a result, she believes herself to be superior to everyone around her. Yeah. Male or female, doesn't really matter, yeah. but more females than men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right, let's keep going. I pray to God and he always helps me see, feel or get truth or courage, as you've both suggested. I can't agree. Yeah. She's not seeing the truth. She ha doesn't have any courage to deal with the actual emotion. And she certainly is not praying to God. Mm. Her only prayer, the, the depth of her prayers only reach to her head mm. at this stage. And the reason why that is the case is because she is committing some quite severe sins and at the same time, not had an awakening to them. Yeah. So she's not in a state of repentance. Yeah. And therefore, God is unable to communicate with her on any level aside from loving friends, of mm -hmm. which we were some, yeah. and others are some in, who have emailed yeah. her since, who tell her the extent of her problem. Yeah. And that's the only way at this stage via which God can communicate with her personally. Yeah. God certainly cannot communicate with her personally um, through emotion because she is in complete shutdown of her true emotional condition and has a complete has not had any awakening as to the extent of her sin at this point even given the email she sent to you yeah yeah mm. okay <coughs> i'm praying to help me see the things i am blind to too and sometimes i see spirit influence about my superiority or other ways that i'm unloving Hmm. Well, I, I agree. Sometimes she sees it, but it has very little bearing on the fact of her stopping it. Yeah. In fact, I feel she sees it quite frequently and, and has no intention of stopping it yeah. at this point. And also, um, I just know from seeing some other things that Monique's written recently on um, the Divine Truth Forum and so on, there's a tendency for people in this state to attribute... Um, emotions uh, motivations for this desire for superiority like oh, i was made to feel powerless or i just want people's approval or all these kinds of things that are actually perfect. completely false yeah, yeah. completely yeah. false self-delusional yeah there's a desperate need for monique to to probably listen to the talks i've said about self-delusion and so forth yeah. but yeah the reality is no you have a sense of superiority that is the problem yeah. that is the unloving behavior that is the sin you commit yeah. all the time and the problem with that sense is that you are willing to destroy other people in order to gain it and this is a terribly dark space that you're actually in mm -hmm. and and i you know i not only am concerned for her as a person but also for anyone 
that she interacts with mm. because of it. Mm -hmm. they, they will at some point be destroyed by their association with her. Mm. That, that's the underlying intention of the spirits with her. And she enjoys that intention because it feeds her addiction of power and superiority. Yeah. Yeah. And this is not an addiction that has been built on a, 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 a avoiding a fear of powerlessness that was suppressed in childhood. No, it's or not like she's been terribly inferior. abused in her childhood no. or anything and she's reverted to this power and control situation no. No, at all. It's no. because she's been fed this sense of superiority during her childhood. Yes, and later we can talk really yes. about the causal issues. Yes. Okay. Yep. I feel I am grateful to you and Jesus for spending the time to shine a light on my addictions, facade, arrogance over the years. No, definitely not. Um, if you were grateful, you would have uh, four years ago actually started to listen to us. The fact that only since other people are now saying the same thing, have you even begun to listen is in the, as in an indication that you don't have any gratitude for the time we've spent. And we don't expect you to have, to be frank. No. Um, we did it because we love you and we did it because we also are concerned about how you treat other people and how the, you know, that damages um, our seminars when you're present. Yeah. But, uh, but that, uh, that's our only motivation. You don't actually have to be grateful. But the reality is, is that you're not yet no. grateful. You may be some point in the future again yeah. if you apply some of the things we're saying yeah. in this feedback session, but um, we even don't feel a great deal of hope that you might do that mm. at this stage. We, we, of course, hope, but there's not a great deal of hope because there is still a lot of self-delusion in your, even your email here to us. Yeah. Mm. She says, I feel, it ha I feel the feedback has saved me from going down some really dark roads forever. Uh, I don't agree with that either. I feel um, that she has gone down quite a dark road. She has actually. gone down a dark yeah. road since we've met her. She is now darker than when we met her. Um, and, as a, and there are, by the way, many people who come along to our talks, talks who are now darker than when we met them because yeah. of engaging specific addictions and having an environment where it's easier to engage those particular addictions. And, uh, and so they've become darker in the process. Now, obviously, you know, She's one of these people. Now, we don't believe any condition is forever, though. No. So, so, so you know, the reality is that she might go down this dark road and, 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 and become, you know, quite dark in her behaviour. I, I don't feel that she will have the power to manipulate millions of people like someone of a similar nature like Hitler or Stalin or other mm -hmm. people have had who have had similar influences upon them mm -hmm. for power and, emotions, and addiction yeah. and control and, yeah. and so forth and have similar emotions in them to do the same thing. But she's not engaging it politically or mm. socially. She's engaging it socially, but not politically. Yeah. And usually people who engage these kind of injuries politically mm -hmm. cause huge amounts of damage uh, to the world and to millions and, and sometimes even billions of people on the yeah. earth yeah. and therefore have a terribly dark yeah. result. And now I don't think there's a danger of Monique doing that because she's not politically no. motivated at this point. However, if a person with these kinds of injuries becomes, gains control of an institution or of uh, a place where they have direct impact, a continued impact, like a school or a boarding house or, or even or a, a workplace, or a, yeah, yeah, company or they can actually do quite a lot, lot of damage, of, yeah, yeah. damage on to people. their own soul and to the souls of others. Yeah. Yeah. And like, fortunately for Monique, the spirits with her are not interested in mm. that kind of like political Broader, power yeah. or, or business based power. Yeah. They're more interested in social power. Yeah. So fortunately for Monique, um, they are not grooming her for some kind of political power mm -hmm. because if, if she followed along with that, she may cause a lot more damage than she's currently causing. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, but I'm also aware that I have a long history of fakeness, self-delusion, power plays and vicious attacks at people. She does. She does. And for this reason, I wanted to ask you, Mary, to provide any feedback of my unlovingness if I am deluding myself in major self-delusion again or blind to these major issues that would allow me to hurt others. I just want to call into question the word allow me to hurt others. It seems like a passive um, verb. Well, she's use. not taking personal responsibility 
for her own dark motivations for a yeah. start. She's saying it's spirit's fault and I'm just... And I'm just a little yeah. pawn in this. And yeah. she's not. No. Like she's, yeah. she's purposely engaging her power, desire for power and control, mm -hmm. and totally willing to do almost anything in order to achieve it, aside from certain things, as I said previously. You know, she's yeah. not willing to engage politically and she's not willing to engage a company yeah. necessarily at this point yeah. in business, although she's still got, she's a young woman, so she's still got many years ahead of her. Yeah. Who knows what she yeah. might <laughs> decide to engage yeah. during that, during all of that. But, yeah. but the other thing I'd like to raise is this is where the manipulation begins. Right. The feigning of humility. In other words, this, some true statements about her own condition, mm -hmm. which is the faking of humility, in order to gain a foothold back into the life of somebody that she has attempted to systematically destroy, mm. which is, who is yourself actually. Mm. Mm. And she has attempted to do that right from the time she's ever met you. The right from the very first yeah. moment of meeting. The first thing she said The to very you. first yeah. thing she said to you yeah. was an attempt to harm you. Yeah. And she has done that consistently over this time. And this is, this is why she contacted you, because she sees you as a target for this kind of manipulation. She sees you as a person who will go, oh, poor Monique, she's starting to see that, you know, the issue now. Oh, yeah, I think I'll let her back into my life. And, and sure yeah. enough, yeah, if you let her back in your life, she'll probably engage the exactly the same behaviour she has in, in the past. Yeah, and I've learned a lot about just... Well, she's done it so many times I, with you. I've <laughs> observed so many times the f false humility and... Yes, the, the interesting thing about false humility is that it comes without repentance. Yeah. So it's just a facade. There's no it's repentance. Quite, and if once I've become more sensitive to my own emotions, I suppose, then I can, I'm much more sensitive to what's, what's, what's really, really what's behind not. the statements. <laughs> yeah. And also, because she says in the final part of that sentence that she's concerned about bringing dark spirits to the assistance groups that she's registered for a number of them. Yes, we, we had a lot of consideration before we thought about allowing all the people who we've asked to not come uh, to past events uh, to the assistance groups. We thought that a period of time has passed, mm -hmm. you know, quite a number of years for some of them where, that have passed since they've been to a group. They've had an opportunity of time to begin to work through some of these issues. Yeah. Um, in Monique's case, I'm not sure that she's used that time very wisely. And I'm quite, in fact, I'm quite sure she hasn't, but some may have. And so what we've decided to do is open the groups to anybody mm -hmm. who may have now be able to demonstrate to us a different spirit. That being said, Monique, <laughs> We don't believe that you're going to cope very well with the assistance groups. And we're not suggesting that you shouldn't come. What we're suggesting is you become far more sincere in de dealing with these things that we're going to mention to you be before you come. And because if you come in your current state, you be will be removed within a few hours of the beginning of the group. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, so and certainly, this this attempt to engage me in giving her almost a right of way to attend the groups is also a part of this <coughs> manipulation isn't yes. it it's a part of saying mary you tell me what you that i'm okay yes or and not it, okay to come but she's also blaming the spirits with her yeah. for any dark things that she does yeah. So this is about not this is about not taking any personal responsibility. We're going to have another feedback session about that shortly. But yes. but she's not taking any fee personal responsibility for the choices she personally is making in allowing these spirits to speak through her. She loves knowing things about people that she can manipulate, mm -hmm. and the spirits whisper in her ear constantly mm -hmm. about every person that she interacts with. Oh, they've done this, they've done that, they've got this problem, they've done that. And they feed it all to her and she loves it. She laps it up and she enjoys knowing all of these things that the other person would like to try and keep secret, which is the problem, which is a problem in itself. But um, she, she's lapping up that she knows all of these things. And then she makes insinuations and statements and, that actually manipulate these emotions in those people to make them feel bad about themselves. And, and this is a very, very damaging thing. Yeah. And, and she's doing will. it. Yes. She's yes. doing it. Yes. Knowingly doing it. Yes. And this is what I'm getting at. But now she wants to blame the spirits with her for doing it. Mm. I'm sorry, girl. Yeah. 
that's not on. Yeah. You're doing it. Yeah. You're the one who's making this choice. And when you get to go to the spirit world, you're going to find if you keep doing this, you're going to find not only are you in a deep, dark condition in the spirit world, but you're going to find actually that there's a record of everything that you mm. did replayed in front of you, mm. showing you the actions that you've taken with this dark motivation. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, I understand that you said for me not to write because of my attacks. So I did ask back in June that Monique not contact us anymore because of such a long history. And also her continual um, facade-based motivation to regain some level of interaction with us only to, to, to have you being opened up to the attack again. Yeah. Right, which is her, her, the spirits with her underlying motivation. Yeah. So, you know, we had to do that just in order for, you know, to be loving to yourself. You had yeah, to and I also felt um, that I was clear and direct with her about what the issue was. Yes. That I didn't it's want to be like part of It's not like we don't like her anymore. or anything. No. 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 And we don't have any residual anger or frustration with her, no. only that the condition, the situation is bad and we do not want to enable her behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, she says, I know you said for me not to write, but I do feel some sincerity in me to know more. And maybe this is true, but also very open to hear that none of what, of what I'm saying is true. Well, we've taken you at your word, Monique. We that have. You're open to yeah. hear that none of what you're saying is true. Yeah. Very little of what you're saying is true. Although there is quite a lot of truth in what you're saying, but only for the motivation to actually regain some semblance of power and control over others. <laughs> There's no feeling of the sin of these issues. None whatsoever. Yeah. None or whatsoever. the impact of them. I no, or the terrible uh, darkness that she creates, not only for herself, but also, you know, the, the effect it has on other people, emotionally has on other people and has on their lives when she insinuates and, you know, manipulates things um, just in order to gain some, well, for her to gain, like I said, gain some kind of power and control for the spirits with her to systematically destroy people. Mm. They enjoy the systematic destruction of other people. Mm. And they use Monique, whom they feel is a powerful woman, to uh, do this systematic destruction for her, mm. for them. Mm. And they run away with glee every mm. time they destroy somebody. Yes. Yeah, so very, very dark. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, I do appreciate all the talks you and Jesus and Legal, which is our affectionate name for Legal and Legal, yeah. <laughs> have posted that really have assisted us. And I've gotten much good material out of this that covers these addictions. I guess I'm afraid that none of this is true and I'm once again kidding myself, but mm. it's better to know than not. I'm sorry, dear sister, but you are kidding yourself quite, yeah. quite a lot. And, uh, you know, I don't know what we can really say to you anymore. But let's go through the seven or eight issues that we feel need to be yeah. faced. Um, and hopefully it will have some kind of effect on you. Uh, we, we definitely would pray that it has some kind of effect on you, but you are in terrible codependent addiction mm -hmm. with some very, very dark and evil spirits. And even when you begin to attempt to get out of that codependent addiction, you're going to find that they will impose their rule upon you quite dark, quite strongly and it's going to be a bit of a nightmare for your life getting out of their control mm, mm. because you are in such deep control by them well codependence isn't it well no she it's not only codependence wants... it's also she, she does not realize that they are in the bribery phase with her they're mm. bribing her to maintain this connection once she desires, has a true desire in her heart to get out of the bribery phase with them, they're going to revert to blackmail and attacks and vicious, vicious attacks yeah. of her. And it's going to be quite a dark period of her life mm. to get out of this particular state she's in. Mm. And, um, and they're going to threaten her, blackmail her, Basically. attack her. So will they be exposing her to the treatment that she's been dishing out towards others? Yes, they They'll will. They'll be directly, yeah. They will. Yeah. And she will find the nightmare of it quite difficult emotionally to cope with. Yeah. But it is the result of her own addictions with, in codependence with these spirits and her allowance of quite immoral and unethical behaviour yeah. without any consideration of the development of her character that has got her into this position yeah. and it's going to take quite a strenuous effort 
on her part with a deep level of will uh, to get out of the condition. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Of course, there are many bright spirits around who would love to see her out of the condition. And of course, God would love to see her out of the condition. So there's going to also be a lot of potential help for her to get out of the condition. But but she's going to go through a very, very dark period of her life and she'll feel like everything's just going wrong mm. all the time mm. as a result of it. And, uh, and, and it will last for some time because of the entrenchment that these spirits have into her life, um, unfortunately. Mm. So do you feel that the longer we stay in codependent addiction with spirits, it's almost like the harder it is to extricate ourselves yes. in any relationship, not just a spirit-based yes. relationship. Yes. Codependence over time, you get more and more entrenched. Yes, and the, when the addictions are not met, the anger and rage is much greater. Yeah. So the anger and rage of the spirits with her will, instead of being directed at people around her, will now be directed specifically towards her. Yeah. And she will feel like her whole life's falling apart yeah. as a result. And that will be an indication she's actually working through the problem. Yeah. Um, until that point occurs, she has a relatively smooth life mm -hmm. and she feels that she's got a relatively easy life. She's getting a lot of assistance from these spirits to have a relatively smooth and easy life because they see her as a vehicle for their destruction of others. Yeah. And, and they are supporting her life as a result. Mm. So her life's not getting supported by God or anybody else that she believes, but rather getting supported by very, very dark spirits with whom she's in codependent addiction. Yeah. So, so the, and I'm painting a picture that's quite bleak, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I don't feel it's unresolvable, mm -hmm. but, but it's going to require a strenuous amount of effort on her part to get out of this addiction now. Yeah. 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 And... Which she can do, but she's got to want it. She's got to want it, and she's yeah. going to have to want it with all of her being. Yeah. And that's the issue at this stage, yeah. whether she will get to the point of wanting it with all of her being or, or just wanting it while, you know, while the spirits let her want it. Yeah. And then as soon as the spirits don't let her want it anymore, then she goes back to and reverts to her old behaviour. Yeah. 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 And the spirits are only letting her want it at this point because they believe that they can get some inroads back in Mm -hmm. with people that they are now out of favour with yep. and then engage again the systematic destruction of those people. Yeah. That's the only reason why they're allowing it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's uh, go through some of the other points. Mm. We've mentioned a lot that we've uh, that I had notes here about. But, sure. Um, basically we... Maybe if we use these points as a summary of each thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the, the first thing we mentioned was that we've been giving Monique this feedback on this very issue for at least four years now. Yes. And that she hasn't changed in all that time. In no. fact, she hasn't dealt with these addictions at all. In fact, she's gotten more entrenched in them. Yes. Yep. Yes. So yep. this is a person who believes themselves to be listening to divine truth and practicing its principles, while at the same time using everything that's learnt for a process of destruction of others. And unfortunately, she's destroying herself yeah. in the process. Yep. It's sad, but yep. that's what's happening. And we do see that not, it's not in a huge amount of people, but we do definitely see that in a number of people. And a number of very spirit influenced people. Yes. Like I said, there's a few yep. in the States that are doing that, uh, influencing huge numbers of people around them as a result. Yep. And there are people in Australia doing that as well. Some of whom influence a large number of people and some of them because of no desire to socialize or politicize their mm -hmm. involvement. Uh, have less influence. But, but yes, there's a varying degree of influence by a number of people who are doing exactly the same thing as what Monique has been doing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And perhaps if we just summarise um, Monique's current spiritual condition on this issue. Yes. So um, at present, Monique has a desire to become more powerful. She wants power over others. She, she enjoys the feeling of be feeling superior to others. Yes. And she's completely addicted to her facade. Yes. Yeah. Um, mind you, I feel she's more in facade when she interacts with other people than she is at home by herself. Yeah. You know, if she's honest with yeah. herself, she'll be able to see a lot of the things we're saying quite easily. Yeah. 
but when she's with other people, she puts on a facade purposefully. Yeah. It's a manipulative facade. Yeah. It's not one that's a part of her being, but rather a facade used to interact with others. So it's quite, what you're saying, there's quite a devious motivation where other yes. people, sometimes their facade is with them all the time and yes. it's a fear-based kind of thing. I don't want to feel what's underneath. This that's is right. the best version that I can feel, I can accept and that others will accept. Yes. It's not that kind of facade. No. Okay. Her facade is a purposeful facade created for interaction with other people in order to gain, to gain an inroads into them uh, from a social perspective in order to eventually attack them and denigrate them and pull them down. And, and, and the spirits with her want to destroy the people yeah. and destroy in particular the people's faith. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There's a large number of spirits around Monique. Mm -hmm constantly who are assisting her in her what are her evil intentions yes well her evil intentions are about doing almost anything for the sake of power and and you know superiority yeah their evil intentions even are worse yeah but eventually she will reach the point of their intentions if she continues in the association in the same way. so yeah so while her her intent uh, is not as dark as the spirits with her intent mm -hmm. eventually she will become the same as they if she continues in her current process yep. that she's engaging and often she's very unaware monique you're very unaware of the level of spirit influence that she's under i don't would agree you say? she feigns unawareness sure and uses it a, a feigned unawareness as an excuse for bad behaviour, yeah. but I feel she actually has a lot more awareness of what's actually going on than she would like to admit to herself. It, yeah, sure. Mm. Okay, and something a little bit about the dynamics of this injury is that the secret of gaining power and control over other people is mm. to make them feel very badly about themselves, yes. isn't it? Yes, shame them, yes. So you shame them, make them feel worthless, make them feel inadequate. Mm -hmm. And then make them feel inferior. Yeah. So make them feel like they need you. Yeah. And that you have knowledge or skills or wor worthiness Abilities above that their they own. they need. Yes. Yep. And so when Monique or someone with her injuries makes the other person feel bad about themselves, mm -hmm. what they get in return is a feeling of power, control. And They're in charge of the situation. Yeah, initially, quite frequently, these people who she has power and control over willingly give their power to her. Mm -hmm. That's what she wants. Yes. They willingly do it because they do feel inferior to her. They do feel lesser than her. They feel like, oh, she's talking to all these spirits all the time. Now, I would like to be able to do yeah. that and I can't. So that yeah. makes me inferior. And all these things cause them uh, to feel inferior to her. Yeah. And because they feel inferior to her, they then pander to her and give her the sensation yes. of power and control. And then, of course, what does she do with it? Very exploits destructive. It. Exploits yeah. it. And what is very manipula manipulative about it that we mentioned earlier is that it's not done in an overt way. No. She doesn't make the statement, you're She's worse She's not an than angry spirit-influenced yep. person. That's right. Which, by the way, most people would never follow anyway. Yes. Most people would say, oh, that person <coughs> is quite unkind. Mm. I'll stay away from them. Mm. But when there's this manipulative facade where there's, there's almost... Uh, compliment that has a backhanded tail end or, or whatever it is um then people become more open to that yes and through their own unhealed emotions yes yeah and okay. and i know she might feel offended that i've compared the direction she's going with hitler and stalin and these kind of people but the rea and the reality is she's not going to get that far because at currently she doesn't have a politicized desire for power and control um so you know it's highly unlikely she'll have influence over millions of people but the underlying emotions that drove those men came from the same emotions she has. Mm -hmm. so, so there are quite, the, you know, the, and, and the spirits that they attracted as a result, you look at what they did. Yeah. You know, in Hitler's case, caused, you know, 50, basically was the trigger for 50 million people to die in the Second World War. Like, yeah. um, you know, that, that's a pretty dark outcome because of the politicised desire to have power and control. Whereas, you know, as I've said, Monique does not have the politicised desire for power control. But at the end of the day, it's a very similar dark desire mm. that, that, that will attract very dark spirits. And through her association with those spirits, who knows what she will attempt to do in the future yeah. if she allows this association to continue. 
she loves the association because they feed her a lot of information about other people, which allows her a sense of power and control over those people. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what uh, the spirits with people who are very, very dark in the past in history have done. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Very, she needs to be very, very careful. Very careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the next thing that we have touched upon was that it's only once a number of other people have pointed this out to Monique that she's even paused. Yes. And and given any kind of credence to what is being said, but it's not really credence. She's not really thinking this is a problem. The spirits with her are saying, now we've got a problem. We've got a problem. The problem is we, we don't have control anymore yes. over this group of people. Yep. So how are we going to regain, regain control. control? Oh, this group of people believe in humility. So what we do mm -hmm. is we help Monique get into a state of feigned humility yep. and then she'll regain control. Yep. That's, yep. that's quite overtly manipulative. Yep. But it's exactly what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's only because now the number of people around her are less. There's less people to be able to exercise this addiction yes. upon yes. that there's this feeling, like you just said, of wanting to get people back yes. around her. Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Next thing Now, was there was another point in there too, though, wasn't there, in that section? Still coming, I oh, think. Oh, still coming. Okay. Yep. Far away. Um, what it means for her relationship with God. Basically, that she doesn't actually have a relationship with God no. at this point. No, she believes she does, but it's yeah. only with spirits who feed her addictions. All of the nice feelings that she thinks she's getting from God are actually from spirits in codependent addiction with her that give her nice feelings and help her with her life so that she has a pretty, pretty smooth personal life, so that she feels that it's a connection with God, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, also, it's very important to note, and this is relating to the other point, that we may just made and that is if, if if a person cannot hear a loving person in their face yep. talking to them about a problem that they have yep. then they cannot hear god either mm -hmm. doing the same thing with them because god is a much quieter voice because yes. it's an emotional voice from god yep. it's a much quieter voice than a person who's actually speaking up that you can hear exactly. with your auditory senses yeah and so what I'm saying to Monique is that if she can't, couldn't listen to us four years ago, yeah. it also means that she wasn't listening to God four years ago either. Yes. And if she hasn't listened to us for the last four years about this particular subject, then it also means that God has not been able to, in that time, share any truth with her yeah. on the same subject. Yeah. And, and she is not in a place where she's awakening to her sin, mm -hmm. therefore not in a place of repentance, mm -hmm. therefore unable to receive any of God's love about the matter. In addition, she is damaging purposefully other people, mm -hmm. quite often and quite viciously. And, and God obviously does not agree with a person who's harming others of his children. Yeah. And so therefore cannot communicate with the person who's harming them. Yes. So there's yeah. a lot of reasons why she is not feeling God at this point. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's right. And something we were going to mention in the previous point was that, you know, even if one person who's quite loving gives you this feedback, yes, I'd want to take notice of that. Well, you, yeah, particularly person. when you feel that that person knows more about love than you do, yeah. you certainly would wish to yeah. take notice of what they're saying. But what I notice is that many people come to us for lessons of love, mm -hmm. but then when we give them personal lessons of love about their situation, mm -hmm. they believe we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. And this is, this is one of the problems that God has with them, that God is trying to share truth through external means because they personally aren't in the condition to receive the truth via their own soul from direct communication with God. God's trying to share the truth with them through external means and they completely refuse to accept that truth. Yeah. And the majority of people we give feedback to completely refuse the feedback. And the yeah, majority do the that. The majority. Without, without you know, without any, hardly any exceptions. Actually. <laughs> There's a few, very few exceptions where we give personal truth and it's actually received by the people who we give it to. Yeah. The sad part about that is that <coughs> if we're given the truth once and we ignore it, firstly, we can't definitely not tuning into God who really wants us to know. Um, but also then we continue on in that sin 
and that creates so much harm, not just for ourselves, but for other people. Yes. You can't, you can't. All of which darkens the condition sin. of our soul. Yep. And the yep. condition of other people if they allow it. And the condition of the planet, really. Yes. Yeah. 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 So here's a person who says that she wants to be involved in the enlightenment of the planet while at the same time systematically destroying it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very sad. It is sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, her current obstacles and the causal issues. Yes, let's look at them. Yeah. Because we want to help Monique see the big problems that she faces yep. and how she can go about deconstructing them. Deconstructing them. Mm. So basically the current problems at the moment is that she has a weak character, if you like. She hasn't mm. developed the qualities of ethics and morality. No, not at all. And she just wants to take power over others no matter what the cost. Yes. Even if she ends up in hell, she still wants that. Yes. Um, she has never been made to feel completely powerless in her childhood. No. In fact, she's made, been made to feel superior. Yes. And Often people like this have been abused in their childhood, but yeah. Monique has not been. No. So. no. Yeah. And that the qualities like self reflection, mm -hmm. honest expression without facade, and developing a good character, a moral character, were obviously not valued in her family unit. Not at all. No. No. And the only that, thing that was d d desired in the family is power and control. Yep. That's, yep. That's yep. It. Yep. So that's a, this is this is how it is. Yes. Now it's a it's a very bad injury to have, and mm -hmm. unfortunately caused by her family, yep. her, her, you know, family of origin. Yeah. But engaged fully by her. Yeah. Over many many years now as an adult. Yeah. So, so she the has problem, a full responsibility, or a lot of responsibility. I should yes. Say, for yes. It now. Yes, she can't just blame it all on the family of origin because she has purposefully engaged this behaviour and for the last four years has been told many times about the behaviour and has purposefully ignored yeah. the, the, you know, the information she's received, which actually engages even a greater penalty upon the soul than before. Yeah. So she can't say that she's been doing it in a state of unawareness yeah. or in a state of, you know, what, what do you call it? Um, Ignorance. Ignorance. Yep. Um, she she is, has been in a state where it has been explained to her quite clearly in the past what's going on and she's completely ignored it and purposefully continued on with her behaviour. And that is unfortunately caused a lot more degradation of her soul. Yeah. Mm. All right. So the key issue now is facing the truth and the extent of her sin, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's two, the two things point. I feel. One yep. is to face the extent of her sin, which is quite severe. Mm -hmm. The other is to uh, completely remove herself from the dark influences that surround her. Mm -hmm. That's the second. And that those two, jo uh, and, and maybe the third needs to be mentioned developing a will to actually love. The, yeah. These are the three things she needs to focus her attention on. Mm -hmm. The second one I mentioned, the one about the evil spirits, as I've mentioned before, is going to be very, very difficult for her because they will put her through hell, mm -hmm. you know, basically, in order to maintain their control over her. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, her partner as well has a similar problem. Yeah. And, uh, and if both of them you know, engage the process of fully working their way through the issues, then then both of them will be going through hell, yeah. you know, in terms of emotional hell, where the spirits will desire to regain power and control and, and they'll, those spirits are prepared to do anything possible to harm them in order to gain back the power and control. Mm. And so it's going to be a very difficult process so, uh, to relieve themselves of that influence. Yeah. Mm. So that's going to be a difficult process. However, immediately they immediately that they start to engage that, they stop accruing compensatory pain. Oh, there's don't so they? many benefits. They, they, they immediately become more able to have a relationship with God. Yes. They um, they can enter can, a state of repentance yeah. for past behaviour, which means yeah. that they'll receive some of God's love. Yeah. They will also begin to have a developing awareness of the damage they've done to others and cease that damage. Yep. Their soul condition won't degrade any further than it currently is. Mm -hmm. They will have the ability 
then to disconnect themselves from the spirits that, uh, that are constantly surrounding them, trying to influence them and tempt them away from following the principles of love. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll be able to loose, if they can loosen and eventually completely eradicate that connection, that's going to have a large positive effect on their life. But the sad thing is that, that things are not going to go very smoothly for them while they do all of that because they'll be getting quite severe attacks from these spirits who up until now have been helping them in their life. Mm. And those particular spirits have no intention of letting them go. Mm. So, you know, it's going to be quite a difficult process, as I say. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. But there's a lot of positive benefits Yeah. to themselves and to others. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, and... Um, the point we had about facing the extent of the sin is that until you're willing to face the extent of it, you can't even begin to repent or change it because no. you, you're still not wanting to see the full truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the three things you mentioned And she's were, going to be very tempted to go into self-attack or self-punishment, which is not repentance. No. So, so yeah. and, you know, it's just a manipulative tool to get people's approval and acceptance. And yeah. self-attack and self-punishment are not the road to go here. No. But you'll be tempted to go there, and the spirits yeah. with you will be happy to help you go down that road. Yeah. But uh, but that won't be helpful either. It doesn't remove the causal issues that are there inside. No. So really, um, seeking the truth about um, the extent of the sin, but also about God's perspective on who's superior to whom, as in equality, and seeking the truth about God. Yeah. The importance of self-reflection, morality, all these things would actually assist her. Certainly, quite but, a lot. but unfortunately, there is not a highly developed character in her or a highly developed sense of morality or ethics at this point. Mm. Um, so that is going to be very, very, very difficult mm. to engage. There's a lovely statement in the pageant messages which I feel applies to this situation. That is, it's very hard to learn of heavenly things while you're in hell. Yeah. And it's going to be very hard for our dear sister Monique to learn of heavenly things truly mm. while she uh, and her soul remains in a condition of hell. And um, it's going, and particularly the, and she's also surrounded by, through her desire, mm. surrounded by a large number of spirits who are also in the in a hellish condition and that, that means that her associations her primary associations are in exactly the same condition she herself is mm -hmm. or worse and it's very very hard to grow out into harmony with love while you're surrounded by a large number of very very dark spirits who basically all they wish to do is continue to use you as their vehicle for destroying other people on earth mm. so it's going to require, as we said, a very sincere change of her will mm. in order to do this. Yeah, so the three points you mentioned was facing the truth as to the extent of the sin, mm -hmm. removing herself from these dark spirits, which mm. is going to be a challenge in itself. Yeah, very hard. And developing a will to love. And really all three of those things almost have to happen at once, don't they? They do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's if I was her, that's what I'd be focusing on. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you think about it, that's pretty much the first day of, uh, of our assistance, assistance group, group that we gave in in 2014 yeah um basically they are the principles that she needs to focus herself on mm. she she thinks she knows a lot more about divine truth than she currently does but um she needs to go back to some very basic principles about how she's using her will in order to move from this situation yeah yeah and as we've said in our other notes that it's just going to take a lot of effort on her part yeah. and you've mentioned that a lot of sincere yeah unless she has a deep sincere desire to change this unfortunately nothing will change in fact yep. uh, highly likely things will get worse yeah um so i hope for monique's sake that she develops that sincere desire and, and in particular also develops a sincere desire to get rid of this primary codependence she has with these spirits in that she gets fed a lot of information about people that she then can use against those people mm -hmm. in order to feel power and superiority over them. Um, if she can give up that terrible addiction, um, that will help part, part, the part, give the parting of ways. She's yeah. no longer getting this addiction fed where she's getting fed all this information from these spirits. 
and they still may be influencing her other ways, but at least she's not aiding the feeding of information and the destruction yeah. of other people by, by facilitating their discussion with other people. Yes, yeah. their nasty projection. Yeah. Often I've found that um, spirits give Monique um, something that they tell her is true about the other person, yeah. but is in fact uh, an insecurity or a fear in the other person. Certainly, it, a shame. It's not a shame. true. It's, it's a shame. It's yeah. a shame they've not released. Yeah. And yeah. as a result, they are manipulated by it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. the spirits with her are very adept at seeing those particular colours yeah. in the body of a person and where they are, and then using those particular things that they know are relating to the emotions to manipulate the individual into a place where they feel terrible about themselves. Yes, mm -hmm. and and they believe the the shameful thing being told to them, which yes. is in often. In and many so cases, they think they've, it's been, true. they've been made to, f they've been shamed in that way, but it's not actually the truth about them, but they take it on as truth. Yep. Monique feels it's true. And yep. so th this whole opening up of the chakras literally happens between her and. Yeah. And then the spirits can the get right in yeah. and yeah. really badly hurt the person physically and emotionally. Yeah. Unfortunately, the physical body gets hurt as well yeah. of these people. The yeah. physical body gets destroyed by spirit attachments and other things that these spirits are trying to achieve yeah. to take energy from people and to have a sense of power that they desperately are in a frenzy trying to get. And so, yeah, it's a very, very damaging yeah. course of action that she's taking, but also um, it damages not only the soul of the persons involved, but the spirit body and the physical bodies of the people mm. involved. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, the last thing we wanted to mention was that we actually notice this injury in a number of people who listen to Divine Truth mm -hmm. and some of the common, the things that we see in common in them. Mm -hmm. So and this is to help other people who are listening, obviously, yes. um, to have some more self-reflection yes. about their own condition. And also to help people who are constantly getting attacked by these people yeah. or manipulated by these people to be more, sen more um, sensitive to the, the attack and manipulation that's occurring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we noticed that people with this set of injuries that Monique displays mm -hmm. have been brought up to believe that they're better than everyone else. Yes, usually by the opposite gender parent mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the men, it's often the mothers yep. that have brought them up to believe this. In the case of the women, it's often their fathers that have brought them up to believe to it. Believe it. Mm. They have a desperate need for power and control over others. When you say a desperate need, they actually have this, I don't know, I don't know if I characterise it even as a desperate need. It's, there, there is a almost Im immobile belief that, that they are yes. in power and control yep. over others. Yes. There's an, uh, they are, that there is a personal belief that they are superior. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like yes. they, they don't have a feeling of equality in them. They have a personal belief that they are superior. They're better at other people. They often cover it with a fake humility. Mm -hmm. So they'll go, oh, yes, I've got this problem too, and I've got that. And it's a whole heap of crap <laughs> <laughs> to be built. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is only used as a manipulative tool to make other people believe that they are humble when they are not. Yeah. And you, when you really face them with their true condition, they get very angry or they get very superior, as most people who are superior yeah. do, they get very condescending, yeah. which is the way a superior person <laughs> handles and dismisses truth from people who they feel are inferior to them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's very true. So generally a superior person, a person who believes themselves to be superior, when being told the truth, will be condescending with you. Yeah. A person who feels inferior to you when you tell them the truth will often get angry with you. Yeah, right? it's but, true. but it's rare to see a person who's superior to get angry with you. And that makes you feel like they are actually superior because they didn't get angry when yeah. you told them the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing could be further than the truth, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they have, so back to our points, mm -hmm. they have the belief that they are entitled to power and control over others. Yes, and they deserve it. They deserve it. They believe it's their God-given right. It's like, it's, you could think of it like the kings of England in the past, you know, yeah, how yeah. they grew up from a young child believing that everybody should serve them. Yes. That's how many of these people are. They believe everybody should be serving. Everybody should be listening to them. Everybody yeah. should be doing what they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And the belief that they're better than other people. Yes. Um, 
that they're wiser than other people. Yes. And unfortunately, a lot of their so-called wisdom that comes from spirits giving them information. In other words, they are unable themselves to feel even their own emotions, yes. let alone the emotions of others. Yeah. And instead, what happens is they have, they're open to spirit communication. So spirits tell them a lot of things about other people mm -hmm. and they love the sense of power that that gives them over those people. Mm -hmm. They want that sense of power. And that's why they engage these spirits to tell them things that otherwise they would not know. Yeah. yeah. They feel, all of these people feel entitled to get what they want from other people. They do. And they always have spirits with them that enjoy the setup and destruction of other people. Yes, yeah. always. And many of the, these people are surrounded by very dark spirits, mm. very dark spirits. Who are actually in like a desperate frenzy to attack. Would you say a desperate frenzy? Is that the right adjective? Uh, yes, but, but uh, um, it's a very, so for some of them, and particularly some of the men that we're talking about now, it's not only a frenzy, there is a definite planned attack mm, mm -hmm. that's orchestrated and organized and it's purposeful in yeah. its in its in its in its impl in it, in the way that it's implemented yeah and we notice this occurring a lot any person who even like what we're noticing it is a direct attack on divine truth on the planet there are many spirits in the spirit world who are very concerned about divine truth at this point but they are not able to influence organizations or political powers into being concerned. Mm. In other words, they're not able to influence religions or political powers or businesses to be concerned about the growth of divine truth at this point. Because they believe basically it's all being led by an idiot who's thinking he's Jesus when he's not and all these kind of things. And so mm -hmm. they, most people on earth have quite a condescending viewpoint towards divine truth at this point. Yeah. But these particular spirits do not. Yeah. They uh, know that the divine truth has a large potential to influence their life of addiction and control over the planet. And they are already attempting to find people, usually from amongst the people who have heard divine truth mm -hmm. already, to find people and groom them for the destruction of divine truth on the planet. Mm. That's their purpose. And these people, unfortunately, including our dear sister, mm -hmm. have been overcome by these spirits through their own addictions, have been overcome by these spirits and are being used as tools to destroy divine truth at this point in time. Yeah. Now, once these particular spirits gain some control over the political and religious organizations on the planet and start to see divine truth as a major problem, mm -hmm. then of course the attacks will be more direct coming from those organizations. Yeah. But before that time, um, these people must be used Mm. Um, in order to destroy divine truth in its grow in, it, in its infancy. infancy, and actually, they would like to prevent it even getting to. They would like to demolish. Uh, yes, people who are listening enough, their sense of worth and their sense of faith, that it, divine truth never grows to the yes. point where their, their goal is the complete isolation of myself. because yeah. if they can completely isolate myself. They can continue to claim that I'm, you know, nobody worth listening to yeah. and no and and therefore nobody's life's change as a result. And therefore, it doesn't matter what I say. Yeah, it won't have an effect on the planet whatsoever. Yeah. So so their idea is complete isolation of myself. Yeah. Now, the more people that assist us in a proactive way and the less isolation there will be and therefore the greater the need to destroy it from an organizational perspective. Yeah. And uh, and of course, you know, this is what these spirits are actually doing. And our dear sister Monique has come under the influence of one of these groups of spirits. Yeah. There are many others, by the way, have become under the influence of different groups of spirits who are purposefully wanting to destroy divine truth. Mm -hmm. And as I say, some of these people are male and some of these people are female and their underlying intention, um, while the intention of the individual themselves mm -hmm. is not easily recognized, the underlying intention of the spirits certainly are if you can feel them emotionally. Yeah. Mm. And I feel that it's important to be very careful as we um, engage with, supposedly engage with the teachings of divine truth, that we don't just, um, I suppose what I'm saying is I see a lot of people kind of let themselves off the hook and go, oh, look, yeah, I've got this really evil intention, but it comes from me being really hurt in the past. And it's almost a way of... It's not even true. Denying you can be responsibility hurt for and it. not have an evil exactly. intention. 
the reality is it's not even true. Yeah. Evil intentions do not come from being hurt in the past. No. Evil intentions come from your desire to be evil, yes. <laughs> your desire yeah. to have your addictions met, yeah. your desire to do unloving things. That's where the evil intentions come yeah. from. The injury does not automatically result in the evil intention. Yeah. So, so stop fooling yourself that the injury results in the evil intention. Because yeah. it's not the evil intention is created by something completely different. The exercise of your will in an unloving direction yeah. purposefully. Yeah. That's where the evil intention comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, our wills are developed, you know, usually by the age of seven. So a lot of the times uh, we've even developed a will to become, to have an evil intention by the age of seven. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Pretty sad, but it's our responsibility. And that someone um, contacted me recently and was asking me about the issue of will, mm -hmm. and saying, "But you know, I wasn't educated in will, and so how how do I? How come some people make more loving choices than I did th with their will?" And I said, well, "That's because they took more responsibility for the gift that God had given them mm. of will. Mm. They they decided, mm. even though they'd been harmed, they weren't going to harm others." Mm. Um, yes. And that's just an act of really embracing the gift that God's given us in a more positive way, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, um, my feelings are on the aspect of will, it is one of the least understood and yeah. most needed pieces of education on the planet. Absolutely. And, and obviously it's something that we're going to engage quite heavily during the Education in Love series of assistance groups that we teach. But um, it's very important for most people to start to see that evil behavior and unloving behavior, which is always evil in its nature generally, and is being engaged because of the exercise of the will rather than because of any other reason, including spirit influence. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and of God. course, spirit influence can help us engage our will <laughs> negatively. But in the end, we are the ruler of our own selves. <laughs> exactly. And even that spirit influence, there's an aspect of our will that's engaged in allowing that or in, in codependence, in fact, with Correct. that. And so we can't say that it's not our will engaged. In fact, it is our will engaged. Correct. We, we are open to it through the, an expression of our will in some way. Yes. And so it's just completely false to try and say it's not my will at work i yes. was an instrument yes yeah. yeah so our dear sister monique um, i'm sorry there but that uh, you know we've had to state some truths to you again and we're very hopeful that you are able to address some of these things yeah. we are also very hopeful that the other people who are involved in very similar behavior to yourself who are in, also in codependent addictions with very similar spirits to yourself can see themselves in this pattern and also begin to address some of these problems. Otherwise, they are setting themselves up as enemies of God's truth on the earth and they will, rev they will eventually feel the subsequent result of that, that desire to be enemies of God while on the planet. Yeah. Now, of course, from God's perspective, no one's his enemy. No. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he wants all people to come to him eventually and to work through these particular issues. And, uh, and that's how we feel too. So we would like to see you guys address these particular issues, but, mm. but we realize that you're in a very tricky position and it's all going to be a very difficult process. And when you begin to engage the process, you're going to find it very, very hard to, to cope with emotionally because these particular spirits with whom you are engaged have no intention of letting you go, have no intention of giving up their level of control over you and through you other people so so it's going to be a difficult process and whatever help you need through that process please you know ask for it if you need it but but to be honest with you we can't help you unless you're willing to engage that process in a very passionate and sincere manner we need to feel that sincerity coming from yes. mon don't we yes because yeah. if the sincerity isn't there all we're doing is exposing ourselves to a, very, a group of very, very dark spirits who only have the intention of harming us personally and harming God's truth on the planet. And obviously we don't want to engage those particular spirits, nor do we wish to feed their addiction to do what they wish to do. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we hope that our sister addresses some of those issues. We know that it's going to be very difficult for mm -hmm. her to do so. And we will also feel that she will feel like her life's falling apart while it's happening. But, but for the first time in her life, she will start to exercise a will engaged in love, which yeah. would be very wonderful if be she did wonderful. that. Be wonderful, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, Nolan. Thanks, mate.